the day he would have been 26 years old. And so they really hurt behind it because we, me and his mother, we celebrate all our children's birthdays. You know, they grown up, we we always count them on or something, you know, for their birthday. We don't miss their birthdays, me and her. I would like to start by saying I was always proud to be his older sister. Um, he was easygoing, loving, generous, humorous. And overall, what he showed that day was brave. Um, this overall good person. Um, he wanted to be an electrician. That's what he was aspiring to be. And his family and the country deserves justice. And they deserve it now. He didn't deserve that because he was a very good young man. I can truly say that from the bottom of my heart. And everybody that know him knows his heart. Ahmed Arbery, 20, would be 26 today. Um, it's heartbreaking, but at least some level of uh, at least the first step of justice for his family as an arrest was finally made after two months. Uh, your reaction today on social media. We begin with our comment of the day from Pam, who writes, Finally, while I firmly believe this was racially motivated as there was no crime committed here by this young man, also equally terrifying was how deep the corruption went in this case. On a broader scope, I think it also highlights the fact that many seem to think it's okay to kill someone committing a burglary. How is that even slightly reasonable? Um, I want to go on this corruption angle. Uh, Jamie White, you spoke about this a little bit before. Um, you know, do you think that that is a potential here, that there may be, an, there could potentially be an investigation into the way this was initially handled? I think it would be negligent to not investigate how it was initially handled. Um, again, clearly we have relationships between um, the prosecuting attorney who chose not to prosecute this case and the assailant's family. Um, and you know his, his decisions to not prosecute were just completely an abuse of power. Um, so there, there has to be an investigation in that regard. Evelyn writes tonight, why, and a lot of people are asking this, why no hate crime in Georgia? They blatantly track this young man. I see one man following and filming and two men attacking this young man. Um, Brian, this is now a felony murder case, which in, in Georgia, life without parole, if you're found guilty, that's what you potentially face. Um, if there was a hate crime law down here, how would that, how would that change the way this case is prosecuted? Well, most hate crime laws are usually prosecuted by the feds. Um, it would carry the same punishment, um, you know, and it, it, it's a, it's a tough case to make it a hate crime. I believe because I think it was more vigilante justice that whoever was robbing or breaking into cars around our neighborhood, we're going to get them. And we think it's this guy and we got him. And so I don't know if they'd be able to make it solely based on his race that they kill him versus vigilante justice type of situation. Juan writing tonight, did all three people involved in this shooting come from the same home or the father-son not related to the third person, or do they know each other, neighbors? We're not quite sure of the relationship. We know they're neighbors for sure. The level of their relationship, we don't know. Um, but again, that's all going to come out during the course of this investigation. Uh, let's get to the next comment from Christina, who writes, just remember, they didn't arrest them because they saw the tape. All the DAs recused themselves due to conflict of interest. They arrested them because we saw the Kate, the tape, Jennifer. I think that is such a, a, an incredible observation. They saw Absolutely. the tape for two months. We saw the tape, exactly. then they get arrested. Yeah, as we talked about before, I think it was definitely public pressure. Um, once this went on Facebook and went viral and all the stations picked it up, I think uh, that's when they brought in GBI and they had really no other choice but to arrest them, to do the right thing and get after these guys and, and arrest them and take, like you said, the first step of justice for Ahmed. Yeah, yeah, writes tonight, off with their heads. What was the victim doing wrong but running while black? It's 2020 America. Um, Brian, how concerned are you? Uh, I mean, that's I mean, that's the obvious issue that's going through all of this, right, is, is the racial aspect of it um, is, is a huge, huge uh, problem. Um, your reaction when you first heard this story? Stay out of Alabama. All trips to Alabama will be canceled. It's 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 a it's a it's shocking to me in 2020 that this type of thing can happen and that 
prosecutors would be behind it in the sense that they would put a positive spin on this. When you look at that district attorney's letter and that he, how he spins it to say that these two men, armed individuals, had to defend themselves against an unarmed black kid is pretty shocking to me. And what's really shocking, too, is the way that the McMichael said, we rolled him over to see whether or not he had a gun. Why? Why did you do that? You already said that you didn't shoot him because he had a gun. So if he had a gun, I think their story would have been completely different. And I think that Mr. McMichaels was going back to his police officer days and trying to use excuses that police officers often make, that often those shootings become justified when they make these excuses. And I think that's what he was going back to. And that's scary, too, because that shows that, you know, where did you learn that from? You know, probably being an officer and having his connections with the district attorney's office absolutely helped him in this case. All right. And, and this did happen in Georgia, but uh, I know you said Alabama. Oh, I apologize. I make sure. <laughs> right. I didn't want to go after Alabama tonight. <laughs> Rebecca writes, I don't care if he was recognized, even if he was the actual burglar. If he was not in their house, he cannot be shot legally. Definitely a hate crime. Uh, uh, Jamie, even if it turns out that he was standing in that construction site, does that matter to you? No, and that's the point Brian brought up earlier. You know, here we have a situation where there is a citizen's arrest law in the state of Georgia, um, but it certainly does not allow for, um, you know, unreasonable force to be used to detain someone. You know, we've seen cases like this in Georgia and other states all around. Um, had they thought they'd seen a burglar, they could have said, hey, wait here and call the police. But at that point in time, um, that's all they can do. So it, she's exactly right. It's that's very it. insightful. Spot, spot on. Jamie, Jennifer, and Brian, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Please stay safe. Appreciate your input. And as we leave you tonight, every night I say, don't forget to hug the kids. I'm saying that to you again. And don't forget that Ahmed Arbery was someone's child. Have a great weekend. Remember, Ahmed. Three, two. At Scripps, give light is 